What's up everyone out there in YouTube land? I am Perry Love Whistle. And I am Titan Reaver. And we are building our first real quad today. But it's not mine, it's Titan Reaver, so you want to talk about it? Uh, yes, yeah, so what we are building is the Acrobrat V2, that's the frame that I went with. Uh, we're using the Kakute F7 uh, flight controller with the 4-in-1 uh, ESC. And we're going with the Cadex Tarsier um, as our FPV camera for that sweet onboard HG DVR. Uh, and then our brother hobby, I think 1407 is what I went with. Yeah, 1407 motors. Um, the Tramp high volts uh, VTX and the FS or the FTR16S uh, receiver from FlySky just they're using their new AFDHS3 protocol so that should be pretty sweet um, to be honest I don't know if any of these parts are correct because I did a lot of research to find what you should be using on three inch builds and it's all relatively inconclusive from what I found. So uh, this is based off of some rough thing, off the, all the research that I could find points to this stuff should be good. This frame was made for having a two part camera uh, away from your the rest of your stack. So. Hopefully we're using that correctly. Uh, and then we'll be using some 4S 850 milliamp hour batteries. We'll be, we'll be running with it, so. All right, and uh, what's, what's the purpose of this build? Why not go with uh, a more tried and true five inch build? Uh, so the purpose of this was to be able to get in under 250 grams. So I did a lot and I, Specifically, I wanted to be under 250 grams with while carrying the Cadex Tarsier. And there aren't really many frames that support you being less than 250 grams that have room for the second stack required by these larger onboard cameras. Uh, so that, that was the point in going three inch. And, All right. Yeah. And aside from that, seems like we've got... Uh... A little bit of configuration, soldering, zip tying, stuff like that. All, all your standard quad building stuff. Of course, we've never done any of it. Any of this. So this oh, is we, all... We've soldered. We've we, definitely like, we, soldered. We've we, soldered quite a bit. We solder. And uh, hopefully this works out well because if it does, um, I'm going to have some choice things to say about soldering in the world of <laughs> quadcopters. Hopefully, yeah, it works out pretty well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to have a working quadcopter before I start talking about how awesome I am. <laughs> All right, so this is Titan Reaver from the future, going back and editing this. Uh, and I just wanted to talk about the process that I went through to to do this. Um, as we said, this was the first time we had, either of us had built a quadcopter from scratch, but we have done a lot of soldering. And um, see, especially soldering on these very small circuit boards, a couple of things I wanted to talk about in specific uh, were things like choosing the correct tip for the soldering iron you're using and the temperature at which you're soldering. Uh, so I don't think that doesn't really get discussed too much in a lot of the build videos that I've talked about. But when putting this together, something we found is that the very narrowest of tips is what we were using for all of the connections on the flight controller themselves. But the two, the battery connections are, are much bigger than, than the other ones. And so after tuning the wires and all, you want a thicker tip to apply more heat to that. Um, it seemed that initially I was, we were kind of worried about applying too much heat. 
uh, because, you know, these circuit boards weren't cheap and getting another one at this time in the world was going to be a while or difficult. Um, and so we definitely started out probably a little colder than I should have been, uh, though we did make it work. Um, but I would have recommended using a thicker tip for that. Also, uh, I accidentally mounted the ESC upside down um, because looking at the diagram, the wiring diagram of it online, the printout appeared to me that it was facing up with a certain set of ICs on top, but I was mistaken on that. Uh, it did. I did connect the correct ports to you know the positive and negative correctly, uh, but it was upside down, and so that led to me having some issues later on. Uh, so after the build was complete, when I connected it into Betaflight for the first time, and then I went through, I had to change all four of the motor um, resources to the, what what they should have been. Uh, so not not a big deal, uh, but it, it was just frustrating and it, it does affect the way that it sits on the board. Uh, and then um, then we got the rest of the things together, uh, mounting up the motors. So it took a little while we figured out uh, just how to run the wires so that they would be clean and minimize the actual wire length being used. Um, and then soldering them on, you know. Uh, but that, that part was probably, I think, the easiest of the whole thing. Uh, you know, conveniently, as long as you group them in threes correctly, you know, I already had to change which motors were which, so changing their direction wasn't wasn't all that difficult. Because um, two of them happened to be in the right direction afterwards, and then two of them were not, so we had to change that later on. Uh, Something else that's very helpful, you can see that a lot of this is having somebody else with you when you're soldering makes things a lot easier working with these very small components. Uh, you could get the little helping hand structures and balance things or uh, put it on the like vice, like you would put a small circuit card on um, to hold it up, but having an, a friend there does make things a lot easier, though you do have to trust that person pretty well when you are uh, working very closely to their hands with the soldering iron. Um, and something else, so about the soldering technique, something I don't see get talked about too much is the thing that I find most important, and you see most of the time I wear gloves while I'm soldering, because the oils on your hands can affect the wires and the pads and the components that you're soldering to and I like to ensure that that's not happening and to be as clean as possible so the gloves have nothing to do with you know lead or whatever I don't really care about that um, it's really just about being clean um, I do occasionally take them off when they're too cumbersome they're like the change of your finger size and dexterity. Uh, so with these very small wires, I occasionally take off the gloves. But when I do that, I, I know that I wash my hands quite a bit, like immediately before doing anything, uh, just to ensure that you know, there's a minimal amount of oil on there. And using a lot of alcohol. So I clean the wires and the pads pretty religiously to make sure that everything is as clean as possible, you want to clean two or three times and solder once and make sure that your tinning is solid and everything will be very simple. So soldering one of these very small components, it doesn't take a lot of solder, it doesn't take a lot of heat, you have to be pretty quick, but the best way to ensure that you're gonna get good penetration, solid joints on those very small parts is just making sure everything is clean and tinned appropriately. Uh, I did want to put some close-up shots originally of the solder joints because while I joked about it in the intro just before this, uh, they, they did actually come out fairly well. So all of the solder joints have pretty, you know, uh, 
they're pretty shiny and you can see the traces along it so I thought it was good um, but I seem to have deleted all of that footage so here we are stuck without it um, and the other thing well, was as far as putting the things on to the flight controller itself uh, it just took a little while. We read through the wiring diagram, so I have a picture of that off to my right um, to make sure that we're connecting everything to the right ports. It was, that was, again, not super difficult after watching a few videos on knowing what I was doing um, and then making sure everything was mounted as neatly as I could on the um, frame itself. Uh, overall, I think that the construction of it was easier than I assumed it was going to be, but that is mostly because of our experience with the what most people find to be the most difficult part, and that's soldering these small components. Outside of that, it's really not that difficult to position things. Uh, so if you practice a while, make sure that you uh, are putting your components on there neatly and cleanly. Really, it's not going to be that difficult. but. The unfortunate part about soldering is that it's sort of an expensive thing to practice. Um, unless you just want to solder random wires together. but And that can be good. But getting a soldering iron that's decent is also not cheap in its own right. That's all I wanted to say about the soldering. So see you back in a minute with the flight footage. Yes, I am. Yeah. All right, Wait. everyone. Uh, this is our maiden flight of my new Acrobrat. Um, you know what I just got finished putting together last night. Uh, haven't flown it yet. I did test that it is able to hover, but now we're here where it's legally able to fly. Uh, so we're going to be giving it a go, just seeing some some light flying, making sure I can get it to a location and back, uh, and then hopefully we'll take it out for some real fleet freestyle if today is successful. Okay. All right, so the flight footage on the first day. So initially everything seemed to be going pretty good, and actually on, on the first day uh, of flying. There weren't any major problems. It just took a little while of getting used to. I thought that the performance was you know, all right. Um, the punch out was good, so more than I had been used to in the past. Uh, but we did. I did have some issues, and this is the first time I started to see them, was when I went to roll to get inverted. Um, that was unusual. That was unusual. Uh, then, it stuttered a lot and it would start to fall out of the air and I don't entirely know what causes that. Uh, it seemed more capable of getting to an inverted position if I went to it through pitch, through the pitch axis instead of rolling. Um, no, but that doesn't really make any sense to me initially. Um, and overall it just yeah, you know, didn't really like getting to an inverted position too well. Once there, I was able to maintain that for a while. Um, but I checked everything again. All of the things that I had done to set up my s smaller quads for 3D flight, and you know the motor span spun correctly in both directions. Um, and then, but nothing happened. So then we went out to the second day, and that's this footage. Um, and there were a couple of problems. So, namely, the I thought that the SD card had been formatted correctly that I put in the CADEX Tarsier. Um, I read through the manual, but I suppose I hadn't done that. And so I didn't get any of that footage. Um, 
And then this is what I have from the DVR in my goggles. Uh, also, I had some issues just operating the VTX, uh, you know, the little one button interface. I don't know if I said it correctly because range was a lot shorter than I thought it should have been. Uh, and now that could have been my antenna placement and a bunch of things. Uh, but overall, it was not all that good. Um, and, but everything was okay for about the first pack. Things, you know, cruising back and forth. Uh, it seemed to be flying all right. But there was a lot of this jittering in the air that was pretty bad under just pretty normal flight. Uh, and I don't know what caused that. It wasn't the windiest day. It was pretty. It was pretty windy, but not the windiest day we had flown in. And I sort of expected it to handle wind a little better, given the way um, compared to the way that like the Larva X or the Larva X HD have flown. Like the two things that I had. Um, but uh, so I don't really know what was going on. And then. After a little while of flying, I started to notice, I don't know, just some more issues um, with the flight itself, so like that. Um, yeah, it could not really get inverted very easily, so that it was worse this time than it was the first day. And again, I don't know what caused that, um, but as you can see, when it is inverted, it does, you know, it does generate enough thrust to stay there. Um, just getting to it kept causing me problems. Um, and I, I don't know what causes that. So, it was a little bit disappointing. Ah, but, you know, it is the first one, and so we learn a lot from this. But there are some more questions that I have. So later on in the flight, some problems started to arise uh, that I don't have an answer for. Because if it was just the tune and that, I, you know, could maybe find answers for it or figure that out. And I assume that all of the things that I've seen so far are that, are just tuning issues that I'll have to work on. Um, but I started to get some overheating problems. Uh, so just in a minute you'll see that whilst not really doing anything, I'm just flying, uh, at least what I was considered pretty minor flying, uh, we started to get core temperature warnings pop up and once it, ha it happened once and then it went away uh, and then they came back in and were just stuck in there for the rest of the day. So after the third pack, I had to call it in and just stop. And that that is the thing I would really like to know what the problem is, why you know, we have this spiral out of control, and then these really high core temperatures that start coming in. So everything keeps fading to black. This is what's being sent back to the screen. And this... I have no idea what's causing it. And I have been looking for answers online, but I haven't found much yet. So, this is what I, if anyone knows anything and would like to help me, you know, answer why this problem is occurring, if this is a known problem with this gear, or if I did something wrong that is known to cause this, I would appreciate it. Also, if, you know, it getting to this temperature means that I should probably just go buy another one. Well, I guess I will. But, uh, yeah. So, there should be some more flights coming up, you know, hopefully relatively soon. Uh, at least some simulator stuff coming up on the channel soon. But, um, yeah, that's all I have for now. So, give us a like, comment, share, subscribe, and thanks you all for watching. Uh, be good to one another, and have a great day.